Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to another edition of the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. For the channels and programming available on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit xzbn.net. And if you're watching us around the world tonight, you're watching us on Simul TV Channel 21. Exxon Nation, um, my guest this hour is award-winning author Stephanie Rose Bird. She's the author of 365 Days of Hoodoo. Now, hoodoo is a bold spiritual tradition that helps enhance your well-being and solve everyday problems. This practical do-it-yourself guide shows how to use spells, rites, recipes, mojos, and curios to enrich your life and be ready for whatever comes your way. 365 Days of Hoodoo starts by providing the basics of hoodoo and then gradually building your knowledge day after day. You'll discover the essential components for your practice, how to master the parts of your life that seem out of control, and the way hoodoo can improve love, prosperity, protection, and much more. This impressive book also features lore, prayers, potions, altars, baths, and meditations. As I was saying, our guest is Stephanie Rose Bird, and she is a hereditary intuitive, contemporary root worker, solitary green witch, and visionary. 
She has been involved with paganism, mysticism, and the occult for over 30 years. She is a practicing visionary and spiritual artist specializing in painting. Stephanie offers healing workshops, rituals, retreats, and classes across the country. Her website, www.stephanieroseberg.com. And Stephanie, welcome to the X-Zone. Hello, thank you. Uh, first of all, Stephanie, what, how, do, how would you best describe hoodoo to someone who has never heard of it before? Hoodoo is a practice of folkloric mm-hmm. uh, beliefs and um, various practices that are um, distinctly American, um, had um, sort of a strong root base in the South, but right. also various states in the uh in the country. Now, how did you get involved as, a, are you what we would call a hoodoo practitioner? Yes. Okay, how did you get started in this, dear? Um, well, before I got involved in hoodoo, mm-hmm. I was a green witch and um, practicing shamanism. And I really am very um, sort of keen on my African-American um, ancestry and right. um culture and what's going on in Africa spiritually and so forth. And hoodoo attracted me because there have been traditionally many um, African-American practitioners and um, a lot of the original root work is from African-American informants. Now, what is a green witch? I've heard of a white witch. I've heard of a dark witch, but I've never heard of a green witch. What is that? A green witch is like a hedge witch. So we practice um, healing kind Mm -hmm. of um, brews and stews and things from the garden, herbs. We're herbalist, master herbalist, and um, into aromatherapy and, and things like that. Uh, what what is the difference between a green witch and the traditional witch that people most associate the word witch with? You know, the 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 coven, the cauldron, the black cape, the pointed hat. Yeah, I think um, all all of us. I can't really speak for the other practices mm-hmm. because they are not um, my own. Sure, but I can say that. In green witchcraft, there is a um, preponderance of interest in Mother Nature, in the earth goddesses, in plants, and Mm -hmm. plant wisdom, and um, using them to help. Um, Some people do it to harm as well, but um, yeah, using the energy of green plants and the earth for for magical purposes. Would it be fair to say that a green witch is an eco-friendly witch? (laughs) You could say that, yes. And I would imagine as a green witch, with everything that is going wrong with the ecology of our planet, thanks to the industrial nations, this must be of a great concern to you. Yeah, it's a very, it's a pretty sad and worrisome time. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think that it's too late to reverse the process that we can actually save Mother Earth or help her to heal herself? I, gosh, that's such a huge question. Mm -hmm. Um, I would hope that we can, and I hope that there are enough wise people on this Earth that can see the perilous path that we're on and want to um, change the course. Well, that takes that makes two of us, and I, yeah. I commend you and everyone else who does their part, whether it is big or small, to to turn the the horrific damage that we are causing to Mother Earth and our ecology, and thereby endangering each and every one of us. So my hat is off to you, young lady. Oh, thank you. Now, three hundred and sixty-five days of hoodoo. Uh, daily root work, mojo, and conjuration. Conjuration. Well, first of all, what is root work? Root work is pretty much um, what I've been um, speaking of. Okay. Um, we work with um, particular roots and plants, herbs, mm-hmm. um, but also uh, with stones and um, you could say sticks and um, different kinds of materials from 
nature and the earth, um, sometimes animal parts, coins. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite vast. It is, eh? All right, now, so that would be the herbology aspect of what you do, right? Yes. Okay, now, mojo. How do we describe what mojo is? Oh, mojo is really fascinating because it's so um, rich and dense. Mm -hmm. I feel like inside of the mojo bag, there's like the whole world. It's like a microcosm of, of the world. Um, mojo is a kind of energy. That's how, how people in common parlance use mojo to mm -hmm. speak about energy. Oh, dear. Sorry oh, these things that. happen. No problem, dear. <laughs> um, yeah, mojo is a difficult word to describe, really. Mm -hmm. um, but the bags and that you can wrap your hand, you can wrap your head around the um, the mojo bag itself right. as an object of of magic and um, imbuing power into the world and kind of um, holding it as um, your seat of power. And I would imagine a conjuration is a spell? Yeah, conjuration is um, kind of like to pull up. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, you know, when you when you want to conjure an idea, like you want to kind of pull it out of thin air. Right. Conjuration is um, dealing with the spiritual nature of, of the world and the environment. And and we can use the, the the 365 days of hoodoo to help us in our personal lives, our professional lives. And, and Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Now, when we come back, because I've got to take a commercial break in about a minute from now, and I don't want to start something and then not be able to complete it with you. When we come back, I'd like to talk to you and have you give us examples of how hoodoo can help each and every one of us. And... Um, Will, will you be able to help us with that? Of course. All right, yeah. Exxon Nation. My guest this hour is Stephanie Rose Bird, and uh, she just lives outside of Chicago, Illinois. And if you'd like more information about Stephanie, her website is stephanieroseberg.com. That's www.stephanieroseberg.com. The name of her book, her book is 365 Days of Hoodoo, Daily Root Work, Mojo, and Conjuration, and is published by our good friends at Llewellyn. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can always get your complimentary copy of the Exxon Chronicles online at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com, and that is spelled X-C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S, newspaper. Dot com. And for a listing of all the program available to you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. You're listening and watching the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Stephanie Rose Bird and I will be back after this short break. Don't go away. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Welcome back, everyone. Stephanie Rose Bird is my special guest at this hour. She is the author of 365 Days of Hoodoo, Daily Conjur- uh, Daily Rootwork, Mojo, and Conjuration. Her website, www.stephanieroseberg.com. Stephanie, how can hoodoo help us in our daily lives, our personal lives? It can help in many different ways. There are... Um from your love life, mm-hmm. which a lot of people are interested in, um, kind of getting a maid, keeping them close, um, getting rid of them when you need them, not like killing them, but just like severing the relationship. Also, um, in your career, you're finding a job, mm-hmm. keeping the job, changing jobs, um, being successful at interviews. Moving is another aspect of um, when you want to get a good apartment or house and you um, kind of conjure it up, dream it up, find it. And then there are different kinds of um, movements and um, spell work, root work that you can do on the property um, or with a picture of, of the home to try to make it your own. Mm-hmm. Um with prosperity and abundance of affluence, um, we have many different money um, related spells and tricks. We call them tricks, which is kind of different than in witchcraft. So, but a trick is very similar to a spell. Um, let's can, see. Can you, can you give Just us an every ex- aspect: birth, death. Um, how, about giving, how about giving us an example of what a spell is and what a trick is? It really is, it's a um, particular type of language. It's just the language that we use in our practice Mm -hmm. as opposed to in the witchcraft practice. So there is not that much of a difference. What I have noticed in the traditional um, informants work is there isn't a ton of, of talking you know, in, in witchcraft, I feel like there's more of the um, incantation and chanting. And there is some of that, but there isn't as much speaking. It's more interior, um, the magic that is practiced with the tricks. It, it almost seems as if um, the conjuration is a lot like the... Um that that uh, very familiar and very popular um what was it called the secret where yes. if if you basically if you confess it you will possess it is this yes. the basic functioning uh, function uh, of a conjuration yeah you mean like the law of the universe yes yes exactly and um i try to guide Stephanie, we've kind of lost your audio. You moved something. Oh. There we go. Are we okay now? We're okay now. 
Okay. So, yeah, I was just saying that I'm really into the law of attraction and mm -hmm. um, love the secret, um, the idea of that. And I do see some crossover, although just because of the nature of the original practitioners of hoodoo, there are a lot of Africanisms in it. There's a lot like it's more it's it's quite um, based in um, African paths. So would you say that hoodoo works better for African Americans than it would for? Oops. No. We, no Ste Stephanie, that. I I don't know what you just did, but you kind of. We lost your audio again. Are we there? Are we okay now? We are okay now. So I, you know, we're, if, if you're, I'll stop touching things. Thank you. That'd be great. That would be great. <laughs> okay. So, so would it work? So, would it work better for an African American? Or it doesn't matter who you are, because once you understand the principles, once you understand the the theory behind it, as well as the language, and and how it works, anybody can use it. That's true, and it's pretty colorblind. Excellent. And there have been great practitioners mm -hmm. of just the rainbow of, of colors. So it doesn't matter at all what color you are to be a good hoodoo practitioner. I think that sometimes, like, people, mm -hmm. um, I have people write to me, and they are just so happy. They are uh, African-descended, mm -hmm. and they're just so happy to be able to see um, some of themselves in a practice. Sometimes we feel excluded from things or we feel like things are other. And I think with hoodoo, it's something that you can kind of grab on to. Like, oh, yeah, I used to see my aunt do things right. like that or my grandmother or my mother. It, it has a kind of common feeling to it. It's very cultural-based. Yes. What is the difference between hoodoo and voodoo? Uh, you're moved it's... around again. You moved around again. Oh, I, I'm so. I never realized how fidgety I was. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, okay, so voodoo or voodoo is a religion, mm -hmm. and it has many overtures of Catholicism in it, um, and other religions from Africa. And then hoodoo is folkloric. Um, it's full of folklore and mythology and um, storytelling and, and things like that. So um, there is a pretty big difference in hoodoo and voodoo. Now, what are the basics of hoodoo? Well, the basic, one of the basic things that you would need to do mm -hmm. is, okay, um, and then many different things are popping into my head, and I know that doesn't make it basic. So let me see if I can pare it down. Um, having a mojo bag, maintaining it, feeding it, um, storing and using its power is very hoodoo. Um, going to the um, cemetery and getting um, graveyard dirt, using that in, in your work is another um, practice in hoodoo. Um, then we have foot track magic where, um, you know, we have like hot foot powder and things like that mm -hmm. where we use the power of movement and our um, tracks to affect change and, and magic. So those are some of the um, basics. Of course, what? a lot goes on at the crossroads. And, and what is the crossroads? Hmm, the crossroads are, you know, it literally is where four directions meet. But there's a fifth element in there that is mystical and magical. And that's where a lot of the magic takes off from. Now, as, as, a, as a person who has also been a shaman or is a shaman, would you say that the crossroads is like the magic or like the medicine wheel? I have I have said that in my first book. I do mm -hmm. see some commonality there, yes. Right. Just as I see a similarity in our mojo bag 
with medicine bags. Right. Yeah. I, I was I was I was envisioning that as you were talking. Mm-hmm. What is the significance of the graveyard dirt? Graveyard um, earth, I should say. Yeah. From there are many different kinds of people, obviously, mm-hmm. that are buried in in um, the cemetery. Yes. And yes. you can pull um, different types of energy from engaging the soils from different um, areas around their grave. So. So would it would the earth from a uh, uh, man who has died have different energy and uses from that of a lady who has died? Yes. And also um, there's the use of um, the innocence of a child mm-hmm. or a baby who has died. The, the um, earth from around their cemetery uh, area graveyard is another um, kind of power that you can pull on. How does power remain in the earth after the person has died? I always thought that once a person died, the energy that was within them left in spirit form. I feel that it disperses mm-hmm. into into the soil. Just there are like their remains are okay. are there. So um, parts of them has dispersed into the into the ground, into the earth. So, And how long after a person has passed away and been buried is that earth good enough or been charged enough to be used in a, in a ritual or a conjuration? Mm. Yeah, it's usually not brand new soil. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's usually um, someone who's been there for a bit that you would use it. All right, Stephanie, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour, in Exxon Nation. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And if you're watching us around the world, you're watching us on Simul TV, channel number 21. And uh, we'll be back on the other side of this short break for the news for all of you who are with us on the radio. And um, interesting topic, 365 Days of Hoodoo by our guest this hour, Stephanie Rose Bird. And her website is www.stephanieroseberg.com. And we'll be back. Don't go away. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Eli Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, 
they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Exonation Stephanie Rose Bird is my special guest. Her website is stephanierosebird.com, and she's the author of 365 Days of Hoodoo, Daily Root Work, Mojo, and Conjuration. And once again, her website is stephanierosebird.com. Stephanie, uh, based on your experience having dealt in this genre for 30 years, what is the number one reason why people turn to learning hoodoo? I think, I mean, there are two reasons. Okay, the first what are the reason, two? I, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I said, what are the two reasons? Okay. The first thing that I thought of, people are just very um, caught up in their love lives mm-hmm. and they want to be able to get love and keep it close. So that is one of the things that brings them to hoodoo. So it's really, it's like um, something that people want to affect change. They want to take control of things and affect mm-hmm. change, I think, would be the best way to summarize it. Um, would this be a person typically who, let me use this example, all right? I've been married now, we've, oh, gosh. Let me see, our eldest daughter is going to be 46, so. Um, And I've never had to turn to hoodoo or any other other modality to keep my marriage and my family together. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everybody is different. Everyone has different things Mm -hmm. that they want um, to... To affect, to have effects on. So would, so, you, would you say that hoodoo is a tool? I think there are tools in hoodoo, yes. Mm. All right, so let's say one of our listeners is, is having love issues. How would, what would they do or how would hoodoo be used to help the listener win over the heart or increase the intensity of the relationship that he or she wants? They could use a particular type of um, mojo bag Mm -hmm. that's treated all with um, love lore materials. Um, That would be the, probably the best, um, the best way. And the other one that comes to mind is foot track magic where you use the soles of the person's shoes and they are put in a particular direction under the home to keep them close to home at all times or, or to help them find their way back. All right. Now, having said that, 
What is the science behind hoodoo? How does it work? How does turning the shoes in the right direction help keep somebody at home? It's a great metaphor, but how does it work in reality? I think that what, you know, one of the things that you said that was so great is when you started to talk about the law of attraction Mm -hmm. and the spirit, because I think that a good hoodoo is very grounded very um, in control of themselves and their environment and it's sheer willpower it's will and power from conjuring spirits and ancestry around the person that they enables them to do these kinds of things some some hoodoos are also um, quite like they have christian leanings so they will use psalms, they, they use prayer, Christian prayer to um, help cement the work that they're doing. But I, I think in essence, it's will and mm-hmm. power from within the hoodoo. It, it's, and, uh, it sounds as if hoodoo actually works with whatever religious philosophy that you're comfortable with. Absolutely. Most definitely. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, you don't, you can be, and you can be even atheist, mm-hmm. any different pagan path um, can work with hoodoo, and some, there are religious different kinds of elements in in hoodoo, not just Christian either. How long would it take a person to become proficient in hoodoo? I think... Like with my book, The 365 Days, giving Mm -hmm. it an entire year, practicing every day, would definitely build some proficiency. But I think that it's not like something where, like the old drink tang, where you just add water. It's not that. It takes, it does take practice and dedication and a lot of trial and error, too. It's like today's diets. Everybody's looking for the magic pill. They don't want to actually eat right. They don't want to exercise. They just want to find that magic pill, pop it, and all their problems are over. But in yes. reality, I know, and I know that you know, being a practitioner, there is no such thing. You have to give in order to receive. Yes. Yeah. Um, Having done this for so long, written award-winning books, I'm sure that you've met many people over the years that have used your practices and who have success stories. What are some of the success stories that you can share with our audience? Um, I hate to beat the same old drum, but Mm -hmm. people have been working love magic a lot. They'll, They'll write in to me or talk to me about love magic. Um, Another thing that people do, though, that's quite profound is they find themselves in the power that they hold with inside of Ah. themselves and their soul. And that's that's really moving when someone gets to that point. So basically, hoodoo also teaches someone how to recognize their own inner strengths. Yes. And help build confidence, I would imagine. Yes. You know, there's the old saying, if you can't love yourself, no one else will. <laughs> exactly. Um, how to, how, all right, so I understand the love, how it improves your love, and I think it's wonderful, especially since it helps people to recognize their own power. Because I, I firmly believe that the answer to every question or every problem we have is, can be found in the person on the other side of the mirror when you're looking at your reflection in the mirror. Yeah. And uh, I, I love philosophies like hoodoo that actually help the person discover themselves and to bring themselves to a point where it helps build self-esteem as well as gives the person the purpose and the ability as well as the tools to make this happen. Yes. Protection. I, you know, I was, when I was reading the information about your book, it said can improve love, prosperity, protection, and much more. How can hoodoo help with protection. Well, again, it's the um, one of the parts of the protection magic that mm-hmm. I like a lot, or is the mojo bag right. and putting 
um, specific elements into the bag and then feeding the bag and Mm -hmm. keeping it on your person, keeping it around um, where you sleep and um, traveling with it. The the Mojo bag, can. there are many different um, tricks for protection surrounding the Mojo bag. It also um, it also sounds as if there's a lot of uh, um, Native uh, American or North American uh, Native uh, methodology because they 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 believe pr- the uh, the protection of salt. Uh, yes, you know smudging, mm-hmm. and uh, the, it seems that there's also a little bit of, of feng shui in here as well. Yes, there is. There there are so many neat practices. Mm-hmm in there and I think that it like came about like very strongly at a time when in some rural areas but also urban areas where different communities of people um, from different cultures were living together and it rubbed off on the, the pe- practitioners. I, I, I can uh, associate with that because when I was a young lad, we lived in Montreal in an area called Park Extension, and that's where everyone lived. You had the Itali- you had Italian friends, you had Greek friends, you had Irish friends, you had uh, Oriental friends, and we all shared the culture that we each had, and it was yes. wonderful. People don't do that anymore. I know. It's getting more and more separate, which it, is kind of scary. It's also very sad because I, I feel very fortunate that I had the ability to learn so much as a youth that I have been able to carry throughout my lifetime. Yes. So, anyway, one quick question. Yeah. Can hoodoo help with the daily stress that we're all faced with these days? Give me a yes or a no, and we'll get the complete answer when we come back from a commercial break. So, can hoodoo help with stress? Yes. All right, Stephanie, stand by. Thank you so much for joining us. And Dexo Nation, our guest this hour is Stephanie Rose Bird. She's the author of 365 Days of Hoodoo, Daily Root Work, Mojo, and Conjuration. And I'd like to thank our good friends at Llewellyn Publishing, especially Kat Severin, who, uh, Sanborn, I should say, who is the senior publicist there for helping make this interview possible today. And, uh, Stephanie and I will be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the x from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. here and they've been here for thousands of years making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. Christopher Fulton is a survivor of the National Security State. 
All he wanted to do was preserve history when he acquired a Cartier watch from the estate of President Kennedy's personal secretary. But that simple act set off a terrible chain reaction. He was pursued by the U.S. Justice Department and the FBI, thrust into the middle of the U.S. government's assassination records review board, even monitored and pursued by the Russian government. All because that Cartier watch was the missing link of evidence, a timepiece worn by JFK that fateful day in Dallas, a link resulting in Christopher being incarcerated and attacked for nine years because he opened a hidden chapter in history. The intriguing journey outlined fully in Christopher Fulton's memoir, The Inheritance, is available now through Trinday.com or Amazon.com. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination by Christopher and Michelle Fulton is a must-read, an incredible tale of how easily our own government can overrule justice. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination. Next on Nation, my guest this hour is Stephanie Rose Bird, and she is a hereditary intuitive, contemporary root worker, solitary green witch, and visionary. She's been involved with paganism, mysticism, and the occult for over 30 years. She is a practicing visionary and spiritual artist specializing in painting. Stephanie offers healing workshops, rituals, retreats, and classes across the country. Once again, her website is www.stephanieroseberg.com. First of all, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us tonight, taking time out of your busy schedule, and congratulations on your book. Thank you. Um, so uh, the question I asked before we went to the commercial break was protection and, and how hoodoo can help us in these very stressful days that each and every one of us are under. Yes, you were, you were talk, we were t- going to talk about stress, I mm-hmm. thought. Um, and I really like the combination of um, the elements in hoodoo to kind of, I don't know, it, it sort of deflates the stress. Like if you, when you, you can do something as mm-hmm. simple as lighting a candle, a white candle or um, a purple candle, a blue candle candle something of a high spirituality sometimes when you're really low like Mm -hmm. more of an orange kind of um or yellow candle to energize uh, you and your space and then with water like especially um now that it's spring um we have been having some crazy rain and flooding here and it can make you begrudge um the rain but One of the things that you do in hoodoo is is um, collect rain. You collect just plain rainwater and use that in the cleansing of your home. And um, lightning water, for example, you can bathe in it, or you can kind of wash, do a floor wash with it, and it will. It's a change um, kind of water, so it can change from dull, drab, worrisome, hectic to where you want your space and yourself to be. So the fire and water element um, can come together and work very nicely. Those are particular hoodoo methodologies. Now I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm not, uh, this isn't a joke. It was, it's something that struck me. What happens, like in, in a lot of today's homes, everything is carpeted. Oh, yeah. How do you, how can we utilize the rainwater well, you can use it in the bath, even though baths are mm-hmm. very old-fashioned nowadays. Yeah. Um, even like a foot soak, a oh, hand yeah, soak. Okay. So you can take it down to the smaller levels. Mm-hmm. And also, like, you know, like a pine wash or something like that, that would be... I have hardwood floors, so I always... I'm, you know, working from my center. That's my center is having these hardwood floors and so I think about what to do with them and I have a lot of wood in my home like uh, trim and, and things like that and so I think if you don't have wood trim or or stairs or anything mm-hmm. like that you can still work the countertops okay. and tables and and glass like 
whatever surfaces you have of your furniture, you can still work with the with essential oils and the different types of waters and things like that. What are some of the altars that people can learn how to make by reading 365 Days of Hoodoo? You can make an ancestral um, altar. Mm -hmm. You can make um, St. Joe uh, altar. Uh, All of the different um, saints um, have different altars. And then the Loa from the uh, Yoruba paths, you can um, also learn how to make altars to salute and um, encourage them to be in your environment. Uh, you're a spiritual artist specializing in painting. In fact, we're coming. You're coming to us from your art studio. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about your spiritual art. Okay, so my paintings generally center around plants. Mm-hmm. So just like the magical um, practices that I um, have engaged in, I carry that over to the painting. So when I am visualizing from plants, Mm -hmm. I try to see their inner energy and their healing potential and then get that down on canvas or paper. So they're very abstract. I spoke to a lady yesterday and Mm -hmm. she said, uh, well, she couldn't see the nature in my work, which was very like confounding to me because I actually sit outside and, and paint, or um, I always have plants in my studio that I'm working from or sticks or something like that. So I was very befuddled that she had said that. But yes, I um, have even gone as far as like doing um, natural dyes as my paint and working with ground oyster shells and different kind of inks from the sea and Things like that, I feel, enhance also the kind of vision I'm trying to pull for. Do you find that your painting enhances your your spirituality? Yes. It grows from it. So it's all, it's all a unit, really. It's, mm-hmm. People kind of separate me out. Like some people are interested in my painting life and some in my writing and right. spirituality. But it's all one and the same. They're just different um, genres or path pathways to to the same end. And and how important is meditation in hoodoo? I feel that it's very important to ground and center um, so that again, so that you can pull from from your center core to be able to put forth the kind of magic that you want in the world. So I feel that it's very important. I think it would depend on who you're talking to, but since you're talking to me, yeah, um, yeah, it's very important. You were mentioning lighting candles before, and you gave different colors. What is the significance of a colored candle? For example, white. You mentioned purple. You mentioned blue. Yes. Um, Each of the colors, like I go through them Mm -hmm. in in the book, um, but they all have different um, significances, like red candles are used a lot in love magic, green in money, um, prosperity magic. Um, I like the, the blue, purple, white, because it's high, high frequency spirituality. Mm-hmm. So it's really um, elevates and um, gets you connected to spirit. So I, I, particularly like those three colors. Before we go, I'd like to know more, and I'd like you to share with our listeners uh, some of the workshops and uh, ritual retreats that you offer. Um, I do women's retreats, Mm -hmm. and I also do, I do a lot of, like, botanical crafting kinds of workshops. Like, I love working with Hannah, um, making natural soaps, um, things like that, but... Um, yeah, I do. I like to do retreats, uh, gathering. It seems like women gravitate towards me. So a lot of women um, come to um, my retreats and workshops, but they are open to everyone. And I encourage everyone to 
to come. So mm -hmm. they are the nexus between or within spirituality and creativity is what I am offering. And I would imagine all the information about your retreats, your courses, your workshops, and classes can be found on your website at www.stephanieroseberg.com. Yes, and on my Facebook page, mm -hmm. I have an author Facebook page, and I always uh, post any upcoming workshops that I'm having there and on Twitter. But the connections to those, my social media is through the www.stephanieroseberg.com, that so website. Stephanie, we've got about a minute left. What are your final words or your final thoughts that you'd like to share with the Exxon Nation? I would say um, please don't be afraid of hoodoo because of the um, sort of shallow, lowbrow, like crazy movies mm -hmm. that you might have seen from a long, long time ago. Um, it can be a very positive, healing path, very empowering path to help you make change in your life. So I would really encourage you to give it a try and not just give it a try, but stick with it for 365 days so that you can really get to the root of the matter. Stephanie, as always, time flies when we're having fun here in the Exxon. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, again tonight and uh, continued success. And I look forward to the next time you and I meet back here in the Exxon. Until then, take care of yourself. Thank you. It was delightful. Thank you, Stephanie. And Exxon Nation, once again, if you'd like more information about our guest this hour, Stephanie Rose Bird, the author of 365 Days of Hoodoo, please visit her website at www.stephanieroseberg.com. Now, for all of you listening to us on the X-Zone uh, Broadcast Network, Radio Side, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. But for those of you who are leaving us now on the X-Zone TV channel, always remember, I'll be back tomorrow night. And please, always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. From everyone here at the X-Zone Broadcast Network, Ralmar McConnell Media Company, from myself and my executive producer, Laura Rogers, good night, everyone. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. You have heard of the X-Zone? 
Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.